everyone. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Wildcard Wednesday. My name is Ben Pulowski. I'm one of our Learning Center trainers. Thank you very much for joining us today. Our topic for today's webinar is preventing device downtime. So looking at some uh, different ways that you can ensure that your devices are staying online and uh, also looking at some different ways you can do, I guess, a little bit of detective work if you do have devices that are going offline and, and get a little bit of insight as to why that's happening and how you can prevent it. So we have our agenda here for today. Now, there's a good amount of overlap here. We did a webinar about a month or two ago on maximizing device uptime. So this is sort of the other side of that preventing device downtime. There is some overlap between them, and if you were on that webinar, uh, there are some things that we're going to cover here that we covered in the last one and some new material as well. So here is our agenda for today, looking at the value of device uptime. So why is it so important to keep those devices online? Some different reasons that you might have for devices going offline and how you can monitor devices staying online. Uh, then we're going to get into some ways that you can uh, sort of research and see what happened if devices go offline. A couple reports that I want to uh, show you today. One is the unplug report. One is the odometer jumps report. Get a little bit into leadership and policies, tamper prevention, device management, and resources. Uh, and this deck I will share with all of you before the webinar ends today. So you will be able to take this with you and use this as a resource moving forward. So onward, let's jump in, uh, talk a little bit about the value of device uptime. So making sure that the devices are, are online, and that's what I mean by device uptime, that they're online, that they're communicating, you can see their location, you can get all the data from your vehicles that you need. Crucial to productivity. So if you have a vehicle that's off the road, so that's a vehicle that's not generating revenue, and it's also incurring some hidden costs like vehicle repairs or the driver's salary, which you're still paying even if that vehicle is out of commission. So some good reasons there to make sure that everything is operating as it should be. Uh, the burden of the responsibility to ensure that devices are communicating falls on the end user. So we do provide you some tools to ensure that devices are communicating. And we're gonna go over some of those tools here today, but ultimately it, it depends on the end user to make sure that devices are communicating and are staying online. So there's a lot of different reasons that devices can go offline. If you look at the watchdog report, uh, which we'll look at in a minute, it'll say uh, devices offline for one to two days, two to three days, three to 21 days, and people ask why. Well. It could be really any number of these things that you see listed here and probably some others that I'm not thinking of. Uh, it could be installation or hardware related. Loose connection is a big one. Uh, could have a faulty go device or a faulty harness. There could be a low vehicle battery that's not generating enough power for the uh, go device to communicate or otherwise insufficient power, maybe a blown fuse. It could be carrier related if it is outside of the coverage area. If you have Sprint and you're outside of Sprint's coverage, the device would appear as offline. Uh, could be a billing issue where the bill has not been paid in a timely manner and it shows all the devices are offline. Uh, some external factors as well, uh, the first one of which is unplugged, which we're going to talk about a little bit later on. You could even call that an act of malition the driver is doing something that they do not want you, the fleet manager, to know about, they reach down, they unplug the device, they do what they're going to do, and then they plug it back in. Uh, location of the diagnostic port, so some vehicles, uh, just where it's positioned, every time you get in the vehicle, you're going to bump it with your leg because it's close to the driver's side door, something like that. Physical water damage or device reporting to multiple databases. So really any one of these could be a reason for a device appearing as being offline in your database. One strong recommendation is to use a T-harness. Uh, part of a study, fleets with 15,000 devices or more, fleets using T-harnesses saw an 80% improvement in vehicle communication. So the main advantage of using a T-harness is that if the vehicle is going in to be serviced uh, and the ECM needs to be flashed, 
then you don't have a mechanic down there that's having to remove the Go device and plug it back in, and maybe it's not being plugged back in all the way, or maybe they forget to plug it back in. You don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, another advantage, out of sight, out of mind. Of course, you want your drivers to be aware that there is a Go device installed in their vehicle because the goal is to make them better drivers and help manage them more effectively. But you know, if it's not there looking them in the face every day, there's an advantage to be said to that as well. Uh, quality install is a big topic, and it's one that can have an enormous effect on device uptime and device downtime. So you want to make sure that it is properly seated, uh, either the harness or the pins on the Go device, that it is plugged in all the way. Even something as minimal as that picture you see right there where there's maybe an eighth of an inch gap that can cause problems. Uh, we can get excessive accelerometer data. When that happens, there's a point where it just sort of shuts down and, and stops recording that accelerometer data, at least in an easily accessible manner. You might run into problems pulling current odometer or VIN, or you might just see the device sort of flickering on and offline. That can be caused by a gap like you see there. So you want to make sure that it is uh, plugged in all the way, better yet, using a harness, using a T-harness, having it zip tied in, having it secured in place. So one way that you can monitor device uptime is with the watchdog report. Uh, this is available. You can use it as a dashboard report, which I highly recommend. Uh, that pie chart that you see there over on the right side, that's the image that would appear on your dashboard and you have the devices uh, classified into different categories. Offline for two to three days, three to 21, 21 days or more, or if the device is not installed. Uh, if you don't want to use it as a dashboard or as an emailed report, you can access this through your database through your vehicle's list. But all this does is it provides a quick snapshot to are my devices online? Are my devices communicating? And what you do with that information, we'll get into next. Here's what the watchdog report looks like in a little bit more detail. So pretty basic information here, vehicle group, the last known address, last communication date, how long it's been since it's moved, how long it's been since communicated, serial number, the status, and then that final column over there on the right, open in browser. So that'll actually open up to a map on a web page that will show you the map location of where that vehicle last communicated from. Another option for you to monitor this data is the unauthorized device removal rule. So this rule is broken when a device is unplugged and then regains power. So some people think that when the device is unplugged, this rule is going to trigger. That's not the case. This rule triggers when the device is plugged back in. The reason for that is when the device is unplugged, it doesn't have power and it can't communicate and it doesn't have a way to send its own status to the server and then display that information in the database. So for that reason, it's not triggered until it's plugged back in again. There is a feature that is in the works that we are expecting to see later this year in 2017 called Continuous Connect that uh, will alert you when a device is unplugged or goes offline immediately or pretty close to it. This feature is still in development, but it is coming. Something else to be aware of about this rule is that if you have excessive exceptions, if you have a large number of events of this rule being triggered, well, that can point back to that list that I went over of reasons for a device being offline. Maybe it's loose in the port, maybe it's a low battery. All these things can trigger that rule. Uh, here we have engine faults. So this is another uh, snapshot that you can look at to show you why you might be experiencing some problems with Go device connectivity. So you have engine fault versus telematics fault. These can be broadly put into two different categories. Engine fault would be data that's coming from the ECM, that's coming from the vehicle's computer. So if you have something like a general vehicle warning light or, or specific device diagnostics. The other category is telematics faults, which is largely what we see here. For accident limit for acceleration exceeded. 
telematics device fault, GPS quality poor, bad device install or vehicle under cover. And that fault happened 30 times. If you look at an engine faults report for say a period of a week and you see that fault happens 30 times, my money says it's probably not plugged in all the way. And that's why we wanna start with installation. That's 99% of the time gonna be a really good place to start with troubleshooting, if you have a device offline, let's just unplug it, let's plug it back in, let's make sure that that installation is secure and that everything is seated correctly. Down in the bottom, so underneath that second vehicle, you have accelerometer calibration in progress, accident limit for acceleration exceeded, so that's what I was referring to, uh, that excessive accelerometer data. If it's a little bit loose in the port and it's just sort of think of it maybe vibrating in there and it's got all this extra data that's coming in, uh, then you have those three telematics device faults at the bottom, device restarted, low voltage and power supply, telematics device has been unplugged. So these do provide pretty good clues as to what's happening with your devices if there's one offline. Uh, a couple engine faults to be aware of here. Uh, there are a couple that say report to reseller. Um, and if you see one of these, well, you should do just that. Uh, report to your reseller or your support rep or whoever it is that you're contacting. So the most common ones you would see, uh, telematics device fault, GPS module not responding, or flash memory failure. Uh, most of the time, that is going to mean that the device is defective and your reseller or your support rep can assist you from there. Uh, low battery, so there are a couple different ways that you can monitor this. So one way is through engine faults, like you see over there on the right, telematics device fault, low voltage in power supply, warning, vehicle battery has low voltage. So that's one way you can look at your, your battery level. If you want to get into the weeds a little bit deeper, you can look at engine measurements and you can look at specifically the telematics device voltage diagnostic. The third option that you have is the rule that we have, the stock rule for battery drain. Uh, this rule triggers when, they, uh, when the geotab detects a battery voltage below nine volts. Now, if you want to, you can create a custom rule if you're uh, dealing with truck and you wanna set a different threshold for when that rule triggers, you can create a custom rule and do that. For battery drain, um, if you're using that rule, this is one that I would highly, highly, highly recommend setting up an email notification on. There are some things that you maybe don't wanna be notified about maybe you don't want to get an email every time someone is speeding and that's fine and I don't want to get that either. Battery drain, that's going to take a vehicle off the road and that's going back to what we were first looking at with the value of device uptime because when you have a vehicle off the road, that vehicle is not making deliveries, they're not generating that revenue, you have the cost of repairs, you're still paying the driver, all that stuff factors in. So again, my recommendation, battery drain, that's a really good one to set up a real-time notification to monitor. Uh, you can also look at the communication status of a vehicle on the map. So here in that uh, image over on the right, you see no communication for seven days, no communication for 10 days. This is also gonna show up in your watchdog report, but maybe if you're not checking that religiously, it's also gonna show up on your map screen as well. Um, a word about that, where if you ever log into your database and all of your vehicles, literally all of your vehicles say no communication for three days. They all have the same time frame on them. That's probably a billing issue. Just a heads up on that. Uh, you can also monitor some of this data through the vehicles list in your database. If you select the vehicle, you go into the current status and installation info and then more info. So let's get into uh, a couple reports that we have that can help you monitor these things. So these are uh, a couple of custom reports that have been built internally here at Geotab. And the first one that I wanna show you is an unplug report. So the purpose of this report, and there is a download link, so you will be able to download this and add this into your own database. Uh, the unplug report identifies instances where a Go device went offline for a specified period of time. And what the report does is it distinguishes between instances where there were power-related faults and when there were not. And basically, the goal of this report, we want to identify instances where a driver may have purposefully unplugged the Go device. Uh, 
So I'll show you what this report looks like here. This is just an Excel file, and again, there's a link here to download this and add this right into your database. So here I am looking at the, minimize this a little bit. So here I'm looking at the report tab within the report. So this is looking at all of the different events that occurred. Now what we're looking for is if you see basically unplugged, restarted, but then you see something like this where there's a low voltage in power supply. Same thing down here. Telematics device has been unplugged and we're getting low voltage in power supply. And so it gives us with this alert for power. When you see this alert, basically what this is telling you is that there weren't any instances of a power related fault. From us, from our side, it just looks like it was unplugged and plugged back in. And what you can do right here is you can set a minimum threshold. So right now it's set to one hour, which I believe is the default, but you can put it for whatever you want. So if I want to change this to, whoop, let's do, do it on the shorter end so you can see that it will just sort of update here in real time. But it's looking at if the device was unplugged and came back online, and if it's above this threshold right here, that's going to be an alert. The summary tab tells you the vehicle, how many alerts they had, and how many possible power issues they had. And then the graph is just looking at a count of all of them. So for this fleet, for this date range, we had four alerts, so may have been malicious intent by the driver, where it was unplugged, it was offline for at least 30 minutes or an hour or whatever that's set to, and then it came back on. We had 17 different alerts for power where it went offline, but there was a power-related fault, so we may want to check installation or battery on these devices. So again, this is uh, a custom report you can add into your database. The other report that I want to show you is the odometer jumps report. This report is currently in the marketplace. The unplug report is not yet. We expect it to be added to the marketplace soon. Odometer jumps report is in the marketplace. The point of this report is to identify gaps in odometer values. So what we're looking at is here's the odometer when the device was unplugged and here's the odometer when the device was plugged back in. So we can see if the vehicle was driven when the device was unplugged and if it was, how far did it drive. Here is what the odometer jumps report looks like. So we just have this uh, one page here. Now this report can be used in either miles or kilometers. So all you have to do is you can just change it from the drop down here, change the measurement and hit refresh, and then everything else is gonna update. This shows you the unplug time, the start odometer, so what the odometer was when the device was unplugged. Plug time is when it came back online what the odometer value was when it came back online, and how far the odometer jumped. So we have, for example, right here, went offline on the 24th, came back online five days later, drove 718 kilometers within that stretch. And you have this here as a dashboard graphic. So you can use this and the unplug report as well as a dashboard report if you want to. So those are two really good reports that you can use uh, to help, again, uh, identify perhaps malicious intent. So a lot of this comes down to leadership and how Geotab is, is structured within your company, what sort of policies are in place, who's in charge of what. And our recommendation is that within each organization there should be an owner for all things Geotab. That owner is gonna set the policy and they monitor and they enforce those policies. The owner needs to monitor that the supervisors in the field are following company policies. And with that comes a discussion on device tampering and setting the expectation that the device should not be tampered with. And if we do find evidence of tampering, 
this is the process we're going to follow, and these are the consequences. Now, these are some examples of different things to, to keep in mind, maybe different policies or processes to have in place. This is not a one-size-fits-all sort of scenario, but just some things to get you thinking here. So, for example, there is zero tolerance for tampering. If your vehicle indicates tampering may be present, the situation will be investigated. A certified, now this really only works if you have it uh, zip tied in place if you have a professional install, but you could implement something like where a certified Geotab installer will inspect the device and record the findings with photographs of the tampering evidence. For example, if you have a serialized zip tie, which I'm going to show you in a minute, and that zip tie has been cut and replaced with a different zip tie, that's something that you could pretty easily find evidence for. Now, some fleets do have a, a one and done sort of policy. The first incident of tampering will result in termination. Now, if you're dealing with a fleet that has a lot of high value assets, if you have a Go device in a Brinks truck, or if it's maybe something related to government or the Department of Defense, then okay, maybe there's an argument to be made. I spoke to a, a couple different fleet managers in, in preparation for this presentation, and, and, and they agreed that a lot of it is and should be situational. It depends on the context. We, we have the tools where we can see how far did they drive? Are they going offline for days? They, they stressed investigating the situation and looking at context. Now, if it is somewhat of an egregious offense, then yeah, maybe that is grounds for termination or reassignment within the company. Um, maybe it's being written up. Maybe it is a couple days without pay being suspended. But the consensus was, uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot that goes into, number one, the cost of replacing that driver if you have a one-and-done type policy. There are costs associated with bringing on someone brand new to that role. The consensus was also that this happened once, we've addressed the situation, we understand the context, we're moving on, but that's it. And this is not going to happen again. And it is something that should be taken seriously, but uh, again, it, it, it depends on the situation and it depends on context. So food for thought. So as I mentioned, severity depends on the exact circumstances of the event. Review the entire situation before taking action and consider the costs associated with bringing on a new driver. Uh, a couple different things that you can use to help with tamper prevention. One is our installation kit, which comes with a mounting bracket and hardware for Go devices. Uh, so if you wanted to use this in conjunction with a uh, with a T harness or just a straight harness, and you wanted to mount this on the side of the steering column or up under the dash, you can use the uh, that plastic holster there and the screws if you want to secure it within the vehicle. You can also use that adhesive. This is another sort of out of sight, out of mind. You're making it harder for it to tamper with, harder for it to uh, knock the device accidentally and take it offline. We also have this Zip Seal 100 pack, which is a pack of serialized zip ties. And it has a, the little, I don't know if you can see that, but it says Geotab right on here. Now, all it is, it's a unique zip tie. Rather than just buying you know, a pack of 100 black zip ties on Amazon, you can get black zip ties anywhere, and the driver, if they know what they're doing, could very easily replace that. This makes it a little bit harder. So that's another way that, that you can help aid in reducing any sort of tampering. So some general tips here for device management. Another action that can cause offline devices is, is poor management of those devices. So some different scenarios and some different pieces of advice here. Maybe you want to create a group for shop vehicles. So if you have any units that are offline, if you have any vehicles that are currently in the shop and you're not using a T-harness and the devices are unplugged, you can move them into that group. Alternatively, you could take those vehicles and rather than move them into a group, you could just add shop to the device name so those devices are not filtered out of reports and you can keep them in the forefront of your mind, which you want to do because you're paying for those devices and you want to be able to easily identify them and you don't want to forget about them because then you're just wasting money. 
Uh, another option, create a group for spares. If you do have any spare devices laying around, move devices that have been removed from a sold vehicle into this group. And then our uh, final recommendation, do not remove or delete vehicles because what's gonna happen, sort of like uh, with that point I was just making about adding shop to the name, you're probably going to forget about them and you're still paying for them. If you unplug the vehicle, which is the same as making it historic, it's going to retain that data. So again, highly, highly, highly recommended. Don't delete vehicles from the database. Um, and then from there, here's our resources page. And to touch on a couple of points, there are a few things here that I want to show you. So in addition to these resources that we have, uh, watchdog report, automating reports, setting up notifications like for that battery drain rule. So one section right down here, we have how to guide moving a go device to another vehicle. And we also have a short video on moving a go device to another vehicle. So this is another situation where people can sometimes get confused and leads to that maybe faulty device management. This will show you how to properly navigate the database to move a Go device from one vehicle to another, not deleting the device, make sure that you are keeping it historic, retaining that data, and then if you wanna take that device and put it in a, a vehicle that's already in your database or a brand new vehicle. Another resource up here is automatic vehicle management, which is, I think, a lesser known feature of the database. And this is actually a pretty, uh, a pretty convenient feature. And what it is, is there is a setting within more details within your vehicle's list. When you enable this feature, and it's turned off by default, but when you enable it, and I go and I pull the Go device out of my vehicle, it's automatically gonna make that vehicle historic. I take that Go device and I plug it into a new vehicle, and it's automatically gonna add that vehicle into my database. So depending on your company, depending on the nature of your business, this might be a good one for you to keep in mind if you are often moving devices from one vehicle to another. The, the word of caution here is, number one, you always want to be careful with uh, any vehicles that you have that are subject to IFTA, to the fuel tax reporting. You want to make sure that, that you have all that data contained and, and where it should be. And it also, if you're having to troubleshoot devices a lot, you may not want to use this feature because if you plug a Go device into a different vehicle to test it, well, you've just made that old vehicle historic and added a new vehicle to your database. So a handy feature, a convenient feature, but um, make sure that if you are going to use it, make sure that you understand what it does. And again, there is a written how-to guide on that. There is also a short video on automatic vehicle management. Finally, the rest of our resources here, we have a telematics device issue detection. I didn't get into that report in this webinar, um, but I did mention those telematics faults. That's a custom report in our marketplace that can show you if you have vehicles that have those excessive accelerometer faults or, or battery faults or things of that nature. Uh, and then we have additional links to the unplug report, which we went over, and the odometer jumps report. Uh, that is going to conclude our formal presentation today for Wildcard Wednesday. Uh, be sure to check out geotab.com slash blog. We are always adding new and interesting content there and, and it's really a wealth of information and I recommend checking it out. So once again, thank you for attending today. My name is Ben Pulowski. I really appreciate uh, taking time out of your days and hope you got something out of this and have a wonderful week. Thank you.